हरिओं नमो नम सर्वे अबाउंग ग्रीटिंग टू एवरी वन वेलकम टू मई चैनल ऑन दिस न्यू इयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एंड आई वेलकम यू वार्म हार्टेडली फ्रॉम विच एवर पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड यू आर ज्वाइनिंग टू दिस सेशन लाइव सेशन टूडे दैट आई एम रिकॉर्डिंग फॉर यू टू डिलीवर वॉट आई प्रोमिस्ड as one of the objectives of my channel holistic health with dr deb so as you know from my previous sessions that one of the key objectives that i bring to you is to bring the powerful ancient mantras that are resourceful and every mantra is resourceful so the powerful mantras that we can repeat in our daily lives and bring in the prosperity and the peace and calmness that the repetition of mantras of any mantra can harness can bring forth in our lives which is called the japa japa is the repetition of something and in this particular session i will be talking about the japa of lord shiva the seed mantra the bija mantra of lord shiva shiva is one of the trinity of the vedic spirituality where shiva corresponds to any transformative energy that we bring in in our lives so bija mantra this bija mantra is very powerful in and of its own terms because you can think of a compact version of many mantras that we can chant but still reap the benefits of the power in it and inherent to those longer chants so bija mantra are the seed mantras okay the power packed seed mantras for example in different traditions when you see somebody gets initiated in some lineage of their spiritual practice usually usually the master whispers a bija mantra of some sort into the ears of the initiate or the person who is getting initiated in the lineage in today's discussion session in this video i would guide you through a mantra yoga session of chanting the seed mantra of lord shiva okay the one of the trinity of vedic spirituality who corresponds to any sorts of transformation and as we know to bring in transformation in our lives we need to demolish of our old stuffs that does not serve us any more so that we can transform that rot the rotten energy into something productive basically using those patterns and habituations as a compost for our ensuing productive and transformative life so think of any kind of transformative resolutions that you might have taken many times in first of january or in the first week of january of a new year at the gregorian new year and as we know has happened to me personally also that once you move forward with a few days of that powerful and very sincere resolution we tend to fall back for different reasons and maharshi patanjali in his Maharshi Patanjali's Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, a class that I teach, by the way, as a group class. You can always join in that class that we um, discuss every every sutra of starting from the beginning, and uh, a very fun class, I would say. Please check in this link here that uh, you can see, and you can join that class anytime. But by the way, coming back to our point of discussion, that in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, in Chapter One of Samadhi Pada. Maharshi Patanjali talks about there are nine causes of why one falls from or falls back from one's practice of sadhana. Right? We were not going into that causes. Those will be discussed in details later on in other subsequent videos, hopefully. And today's session, I will talk about a tool that we can use to in Patan in Maharshi Patanjali's language, you can think of to get the state of Super consciousness, which 
in Sanskrit is called the Samadhi. And there are different kinds of Samadhi, as you will see in Maharshi Patanjali's discussion. In his own aphorisms or sutras, you will see there are, in the first chapter he talks about in, in 17th sutra, first chapter of Samadhi Pada, you can see he talks about Sampragnyataha Samadhi, where there is an outside means that we resort, uh, resort to to get to that meditative or absor absorbative state. Then there is Asampagnyata Samadhi, where we get to that state where only the reflection of our truest nature is remaining. Nothing else remains. So difficult to achieve, but definitely worth giving it a shot because in the process, what we gain is so much clarity that even taking a one simple step towards that path of experiencing that pure bliss can be mind-boggling experience. And please note, I am not claiming in this video, I have had the Samadhi experience in no means, but I can definitely and confidently say that the practice, the tools that have been mentioned in these scriptures, authentic root texts of scriptures like Maharshi Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, it's a kind of a manual handbook textbook of skillful living. And then there is other sister book, which is more in terms of lucidity, how you chant the mantras and all that. It's more in a rhymic fashion in meter, mostly in Anushtuk Chanda or Prasidi. It's the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So those two are the most authentic root texts. Does not talk too much about the asana and pranayama. They do talk a little bit and I can talk how much and what exactly they talk about in those books in subsequent videos. But just to keep this video short, one of the tools to attain this absorbative state, Maharshi Patanjali talks about the tool of japa. And I will read out the sutra here. Tad japas tadartha bhavanam. Slowly. Tad japas tadartha bhavanam. I was clearly audible. So I will say it a few more times. Tad japas tadartha bhavanam. Tad japas tadartha bhavanam. To repeat it with reflection upon its meaning is an aid. Now, in the previous sutra, he talked about tasya vachakaha pranavaha, means the way to address Ishwara, the pure self, which does not have any conflict, any suffering, that pure self special purusha purusha is inside every one of us the eternal state of our atman which is not afflicted by any kind of sufferings or any kind of decay purusha ishwara is that special purusha I'm not discussing too much in uh, in terms of ishwara here but i just want to mention that it's an authentic age to do the japa of either om or as a matter of fact any mantra, especially the seed mantras, and to ponder over the meaning of the mantra, not just chanting it for the name or for the sake of chanting, but actually to internalize the meaning of the chanted mantra, whether it's a seed mantra or something else. Okay. Now, so uh, Sutra 28, the which I just chanted for you, it means to repeat it. It in this case is the previous one, which is the Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha, the Om, how you address the Ishwara. That's why every mantra starts with an Om to address the divine. And you, if you uh, repeat it with reflection upon its meaning, is an aid. Now, I should mention that it can be either just the Om or it can be a little longer with some combination of words, which is Om and some words also add it next to Om. In this mantra, there will be three words only. There are Vedic chantings, of course, as you know, some of you have attended all my, or many of my workshops that I have given on Vedic chanting, and you know there are longer Vedic chants with different purposes. But in this case, it's just three words, okay, that we will discuss in this session. The three words are Om, Namaha Shivaya. Shivaya. You see, Om Namaha. The aspiration is coming from the Visarga, the colon sign that you see in the screen here. And Shivaya. Va is a long A, which is why you see the bar on top of A. This is a way to write 
the pronunciation of the Sanskrit alphabets and its right pronunciation. We have uh, taken the IAST transliteration for this particular video and what you see on the slide. There are other ways also how you can write the Sanskrit scripts in English or Roman scripts. Here I have followed the IAST transliteration rules. That's why A long A is denoted as A with a bar on top. Okay. In this case, if you just chant or do a japa of these three words as the bija mantra or seed mantra of Lord Shiva, which you can think of the divine energy of transformation. You can say it separately like Om Namaha Shivaya. But when I teach the chantings, I also try to incorporate some of the rules, how this can be chanted so that it's also following the, some pronunciation rules in the sense the the pronunciation of these words together. For example, in this case, if you say it separately, it will be Om Namaha Shivaya. But if you say it together, kind of in a liaison format, just like in French language, we know the last um, last S of a previous word when it attaches with the next vowel, it kinds of take the Z, the Z sounds. So Om Namaha Shivaya. So S with an accent on top. There are three sounds of S. I'm not going into two details of it. Um, I discuss it in all my Vedic chanting classes that I offer. So in this case, this particular S will be the sound of SH as in shirt. Say with me here, if you are listening to it live or as you are listening to it, do it live. Do it live. Shirt. Shirt. The SH as in shirt is the S with an accent on top. So means it's combining with the SH or S accent with the next word of Shiva or Shivaya. So Om Namash, as if we are pronouncing a half SH instead of the Visargaha or the colon sign, which is an aspirated sound. You expel some air out. For example, in this case, Om Namaha, Namaha, from the belly, the aspiration. Namaha, Shivaya, long A, so longer pronunciation, Shivaya. She is short E, so quickly, Shivaya. A is also short at the end. So in the middle, it's a longer vowel, A, A as in father, long A. So Om Namaha, Shivaya. Now, you know, if I chant it 108 times, a very auspicious number, Again, maybe another discussion why it is so. I am not chanting here 108 times just to keep the video reasonable in length. I will chant it 27 times. Okay? 27 times. And you can, and I am assuming that at least four people are listening to, the, listening to this video together at the same time, which is not a big ask, right? There are about 7 billion, 8 billion people on the planet. And I am assuming only four out of seven to 8 billion people are listening to this video and doing it with all of the other three. So it will be 27 times 408 already. So I will chant it along with you for 27 times for the Bija Mantra or the Seed Mantra of Lord Shiva. Yeah. So Shiva, the meaning of it, as I said, that the, the, the Trinity, one of the Trinity, divine Trinity, who corresponds to transformation, you can also think of Shiva. Literal meaning is the auspiciousness. The auspiciousness. For example, in um, Adi Bhagavan Adi Shankaracharya's Nirvana Shatakam, he talks about Every in the six verses, the last part of each verse finishes with <clears throat> Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham Shiva Aham Shivoham. I am the eternal bliss consciousness, Shiva. Right? So you can think of the eternal consciousness, the bliss. Also, the auspiciousness is also the Shiva. Right? So if you are in a junction of life where you do want to transform your life for many many issues, whatever it is you are going through, you can chant this, you can play this recording, you can just sit in your meditation posture, you can lay down, you can walk, whatever got you. Yeah, You can play this and do repeat of four times. So 27 times 408. It's okay if you don't have if you don't have much time and you are in a rush, listen to it however long you can listen to. But try to go for four rounds to make it 108. Okay? And I am sitting 
the forgiveness of just doing it 27 times just for the sake of keeping the video shorter in this particular session so we will begin with situating ourselves in a nice posture by nice posture i mean we are having a posture of ease and stability stability and ease so sthira and sukha which is the definition of asana by maharshi patanjali another discussion so two qualities of asana or the yogic postures one is sthira is stable steady not fidgeting and sukha means like sukhasana means easy posture or easeful posture so sthira sukham asanam sthira sukham asanam asana is with the qualities of stability and easefulness so make sure you are having a posture of sthira and sukha if you feel like you need to lay down please do so as well now immediately bring your attention to your breath what i mean is that just notice your breath without trying to change it in any way i automatically closed my eyes because it just helps me to refrain one of my sensory stimulus which is the vision stimulus sensory stimulus of vision and i'm trying to internalize my gaze but you can if you are in an advanced practice you can always keep your eyes open but i have seen when we begin especially if i'm talking if i keep my eyes closed that gives me some better focus because i am sharing something with you and i, I want to make sure it's absolutely with dharana one pointed focus so close your eyes or not depending on your state of being right now focus on your breathing Now deepen your breath, deepening meaning, deepening compared to your normal breathing, which means you elongate your inhalations and exhalations. And technically speaking, you would like to have your exhalations almost double the duration of your inhalations. If there is some issues in doing that, it's completely okay. Deepening your inhale from the belly button, from the nabhi. coming all the way up through the crown of the head, going upward direction, as if you are gaining some height through the elongation of your spine as you inhale, draw the energy up from the roots to your crown and beyond. Pause at the peak of your inhale. See if you can pause some few seconds, maybe two, three seconds or so. And exhale, elongating it longer than the inhalation. Continue for a few rounds just to get a feel, the groove of this elongated breathing. Inhalations, pause, longer than inhalations, exhalations. Pause again before the next inhalation. Continue for a few rounds. See if your body is having tensed in any parts. Try to make sure that you are attaining, always bringing in the idea of sthira, steady, and sukha, more importantly, easeful. Okay? Do what you need to do at this point.
Now we will chant Omkar three times and then we get started with the Shiva. Shiva, the Bija Mantra, 27 times. I will keep the count. You don't need to worry about it at all. You just focus and enjoy this Mantra Yoga session. Three Om chants. You can join it with me. Join in it with me. Inhaling. Again, same kind of elongated breathing. We will exhale and chant the Om in our exhalations, of course. Pause at the peak of your inhalation. Exhale. Ooh. Inhaling all the way up. Pause at the peak. And exhale. Ooh. Last time. Inhale. Pause at the peak. Excel. Now we begin this Lord Shiva Bija Mantra. Now I should mention that you can continue the chanting of Om, the Japasthadartha Bhavanam, to meditate with the meaning of it of Om, if you know it already, you can meditate on this sacred sound vibration of Om and continue with that Om syllable chanting or Japa, or you can do what we are, um, what I'm doing it right now of Shiva Bija Mantra, Om Namah Shivaya. I will keep the count of 27 times and I will warn before the last three times. Inhaling. Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Namah 
शिवाय ओ नम 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 शिवाय लास्ट थ्री टाइम्स टू मेक इट ट्वेंटी सेवन ओ नम नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय now relax and continue listening to this video in a loop for four times to make it 108 or even 1008 what does it mean om namah shivaya namaha the word come from the root verb of nam 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 means bow to bow means we are letting our ego surrendering our ego to the divine because gesture of bowing which is prevalent in many ancient especially eastern south eastern south east asian cultures when we do namaste we bow our head because i am acknowledging the divinity that is all pervading so keeping our aham the individual identity in check so i bow om is the divine sound that we address the divine with so tasya vachakah pranavah chapter 1 sutra 27 you can either chant this pranavah sound which is the omkar sound and you can do it repeat it do a japa of that but you can also add on just like we did adding on another two words to make it om namah shivaya shivaya means shivaha it's the masculine word the first case singular is shivaha shivaha and the dative case the fourth case singular is shivaya so means to i am prostrating to the cause of shiva either it's the shiva you can think of the deity shiva the trinity or like i said the other meaning is shiva is any transformation any kind of energy of auspiciousness for example the shiva sankalpa suktam there you are doing a resolution sankalpa resolution of shiva auspiciousness to bring in resolution of auspiciousness in our lives inside out shiva sankalpa suktam there it's auspiciousness but you can think of om namah shivaya you can it's up to you what calls you if you are in the state of bringing any transformation letting go of the old patterns and welcoming the new as we welcome the new gregorian year the english new year of 2023 saying goodbye to it and welcome in 2024 i thought i will make this first video of my channel of this beja mantra the seed mantra of the divinity of transformation and auspiciousness you can take it in the way that you need it the most in your life situation so with that i will draw close 
to this video. It's kind of already getting very long. But I should include before I draw conclusion is what will be ideal time to chant this before you begin any kind of internalization. Definitely, if you are sitting down to begin any kind of work that needs ultimate focus, dharana, one pointed focus. Actually, you can do it any time, all the time, because mind is always subjected to the fluctuations, the five kind of vrittis of fluctuations, chitta vrittayaha, five kinds, pancha chitta vrittayaha. So <clears throat> whatever fluctuations there are, are, that, are, that are arising in our mind, which happens on a continual basis, you can keep chanting this Bija Mantra, but I understand that in our current world, it might not be practically feasible to do it out loud, but always in your mind, you can keep chanting this as you are doing your regular activities uh, within quotes, the seemingly mundane activities, which are very important for us to sustain in our material world, right? So Om Namaha Shivaya or Om Namah Shivaya when we are chanting it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you have learned a practical tool how to prepare ourselves to access that realms of samadhi or super consciousness, complete absorption of our mind-body system into the state of our untainable, pure bliss, the Purusha Vishesha, Ishwaraha, to be our mind completely absorbed in the state of all-pervading divinity. This is already within us. Yeah. So if you find this video resourceful and helpful please hit that like button i do have to say it shamelessly because i have seen that many of you do listen to these videos but you either don't like it or you don't subscribe to the channel i am so offended i'm joking so please hit that like button subscribe to my channel and share this video with as many people as you think would benefit from this powerful yet unbelievably simple practice of japa on the divine names okay with that i wish all of you a very very fulfilling purposeful gregorian new year of 2024 may that may this year bring in all encompassing joy peace abundance prosperity clarity right? Holistic health so that we can proceed in serving others that we have chosen as our dharma, right? In my case, it's holistic health and healing dedicated my life completely for the rest of the years that I will have my breath going on to bring to you these powerful practices through different means, not necessarily just mantras, but different means of holistic health and healing. You can take a look on my other playlists that I have out there. So I try to cover a wide variety of tools. And if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, where I would customize and understand the needs of your holistic health through a comprehensive assessment that you will fill in prior to we even start working, Based on that, I will prepare the healing tools that is needed for your growth, your transformation of holistic health and healing. Please do get in touch with me. All my social media contacts, including email and WhatsApp, is provided in the, my channel description in the About section. You can find me there in Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, of course, in YouTube. And send me a message anywhere there or in my email too. I wish you all the best and nothing short of pure bliss. May you be successful and may you able to bring your best version to the community. With that, take care. Hari Om. Namaste. I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye for now.